Good evening, one and all. My name is Jake Hudson. I'd like to welcome you to the Mass sponsored by Dignity Washington for the LGBTQ community of Washington, D.C., our family and friends. Um, we are celebrating the fifth Sunday of Easter tonight. Reverend Ann is our presider. Um, we are an inclusive community, and by that we mean please use whatever reverend term for God you feel most comfortable. Uh, I'd also like to ask you to please silence any devices that you have that make noise, like I'm doing right now, so that others are not disturbed during Mass. Um, nothing else special tonight, so settle back and Mass will begin. Good evening. good evening, and good evening to those who are watching us virtually. In the name of our Creator, and our Redeemer, and our Sanctifier, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. My brothers and my sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare for the mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. God have mercy. God have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have, mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of our Creator to intercede for us. God have mercy. God have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
we have received and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter received their baptism through Christ our Lord. And let us renew our baptismal vows. Do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? Do you renounce Satan as the author and prince of evil? Do you believe in God, the creator almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the death and is seated at the right hand of God? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. And may Almighty God, our Creator, and our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by His grace in Christ Jesus, our Lord, for eternal life. Amen.
almighty, ever-living God, help us to bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now during those days, when the disciples were increasing in number, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews, because their widows were being neglected at the daily distribution of food. And the twelve called together the whole community of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should neglect the word of God in order to wait on tables. Therefore, brothers, select from among yourselves seven men of good standing, full of the Spirit and of wisdom, whom we may appoint to this task, while we, for our part, will devote ourselves to prayer and to serving the Word. What they said pleased the whole community, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit, together with Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas, a convert from Antioch. They had these men stand before the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. The word of God continued to spread the number of the disciples increased greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. from death 
A reading from the first letter of Peter. Beloved, come to the Lord, the living stone. Though rejected by human beings, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. Like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. The word of the Lord.
from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going? Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, I have been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, but if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. In the first reading from the book of Acts, we hear about the tensions in one early church community. There was an inequality in the distribution of food. The Greek Christians, actually these were ones who had initially converted to Judaism and then decided to follow Christ, thought the widows of the Hebrew Christians were getting the best of things. So they complained to the apostles. The apostles then chose a committee of seven to work out an equitable food distribution system. And one of the seven chosen was Stephen. This reading ends with a description of a kind of liturgy for ordaining persons for specific tasks. Here you have the beginnings of the diaconate. In the second reading from 1 Peter, Peter has encountered the risen Jesus and invites people to come to Christ. Peter has now made the leap of faith he had not yet made with the other disciples in today's Gospel reading. In the Gospel reading from John, the disciples are anxious, they're upset, so Jesus reassures them, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust me, I am your friend, I am at one with God, and you can believe in me in the same way you believe in God. Then Jesus uses a parable-like story as a comforting image to explain he will come back and take the disciples to that place so they will be together with him again. God is so present in Jesus' life that to know Jesus is to know God. But the disciples aren't getting it. It's a giant leap from Jesus at the Last Supper to now Jesus after the resurrection. And look at us. We just don't get it sometimes either. We're afraid, frustrated, discouraged, especially with so much going on around us. Debt ceiling worries, 
unexplainable gun violence, along with transphobia, homophobia, racism, bigotry, ageism. But we are an Easter people. We have taken that leap of faith. Jesus is risen. The Holy Spirit empowers us to know Jesus and through him to know God. Look at Jesus. Back in 1988, Jim and I were getting ready uh, to move from Chicago to another part of the USA. And at that time, I was given a goodbye card by a friend that said, where you are, there you are. So the question is, self, where are you? The how and where of our spirits, our memories, our bodies, these begin the journey of our finding God, finding us. God's truth is meeting us in our truth. But maybe right now, we're not sure of where our truth is. Fact, we are troubled and anxious. These are uncertain times going on around us right now. Everybody wants no suffering, no crop failures, no droughts, no, tor no, no tornadoes or hurricanes, no dust storms, no shootings, no wars, and to avoid trouble to live the good life. Ah, to escape and win the lottery and have luxury, power, honor, and glory. Is there an escape? Is there an escape from the pandemic of disinformation, of mixed messages, the violence of hate-driven anger and confusion? Is there an escape from the weariness and stress we are feeling? Yes. We have to have self-compassion as well as compassion for others. Hold on to God in prayer and practice contemplative listening so you can move toward answers. Our challenge is to engage in life-giving activities, supporting one another and pulling meaning into our lives. Let the meaning in. This is what Jesus urged his followers to do out of love for others and out of love for themselves. Jesus presents himself as the authentic vision of existence. To whom can we go? Jesus has the words of eternal life, a power greater than yourself. Jesus is companioning you and I through our discouragement and frustration. He has not left your side. The risen Jesus is the way forward, the path to thriving, the truth the Word of God. St. Ambrose, who lived from 339 to 397, said this, and I think he said it as a prayer, for you are our way, our truth, our life, our strength, our confidence, our reward. Be the way that receives us. Be the truth that strengthens us, the life that invigorates us. End of quote. Being troubled and anxious is a fact of our stress-filled lives. But think of St. Ambrose, what he said as a prayer. You are our way, our truth, our life, our strength, our confidence. Be the way that receives us, the truth that strengthens us, the life that invigorates us. Then we will be able to see that there is a love stronger than death that there's a love stronger than stress and anxiety. And for that matter, to see a love stronger than power, riches, and the trouble-free life, even if you do win the lottery. It is the way to freedom. In God's house, there are many dwelling places. If there were not, Jesus would have told you. Would Jesus have told you? He was going to prepare a place for you? Follow Jesus' way to real life. Dear God, be our way, our truth, our life, our strength, our confidence. 
Be the way that receives us. Be the truth that strengthens us. Be the life that invigorates us. Amen. We have a custom here at Dignity in Washington to celebrate the sacrament of anointing of the sick on the first Sunday of every month. This communal sacrament of healing is open to anyone who desires the healing touch of God for whatever reason, body, mind, or spirit. The sacrament is administered through prayer and the anointing of the forehead and the palms of the hands with the blessed oil. Reverend Ann and I will first administer to the choir and go down the side aisle. Reverend Dennis, Father Dennis and Jake will go down the center aisle. If you wish to be anointed, please come to the aisle. If you are unable to come to the aisle, please let the priests know and they will administer to you there. This is a communal sacrifice, a sacrament, but during COVID, we usually put our hand up. Uh, uh, in regular times, we would extend our, uh, we would touch the person being anointed. But during COVID times, we ask you to extend your hands from the pew in solidarity with the person being anointed. Thus, as the one body of Christ, we pray for God's love, healing, and grace of the Holy Spirit. Our response to this prayer over the blessed oil is, Blessed be God who heals us in Christ. Praise to you, God, who sent your Son to live among us and bring us salvation. Praise to you, God, the only begotten one. You humbled yourself to share in our humanity and heal our infirmities. Praise to you, God, the Holy Spirit, the Consoler. Your unfailing power gives us strength in our bodily weakness. Almighty God, ease the suffering of those who seek your healing touch and enrich those who choose to share their gifts in a world yearning for leaders, prophets, and friends. We ask this through Christ our Lord and brother.
Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, by the grace of your Holy Spirit, cure the weakness of your servants, heal their sickness, and forgive their sins. Expel all affliction in mind and body, mercifully restore them to full health. For you are God forever and ever. As a holy nation and God's own people, let us offer intercessions in Jesus' name on behalf of us all. Our response this evening will be, God, hear our prayer. For people all over the world who long to see the face of God, may they see now God's loving care for them, we pray. For victims of neglect or rejection, May they yet be convinced that they are precious in God's sight, we pray. For this assembly of God's holy people, may our dignity life together bear witness that Jesus is indeed for us the way, the truth, and the life, we pray. That we may all find our contemplative side and realize the love of Jesus, we pray. For those in our community who are sick or who have asked for our prayers, especially Betsy, John, Alvin, Jeff, Krista, Aaron, Judy, Mark, Orlean, Priscilla, Sue, and those we mentioned aloud by name. May God give them and their caregiver strength, we pray. For those in our community who have died, especially our members Dave Pichette this last year, Tom Ingold, Tom Hardy, Tom Barnes, Chris McManus, our family and friends, Richard, those who have died of COVID, and those we mentioned aloud by name. May they all be at the great bank with God, we pray. For, and for what else shall we pray this evening? For all victims of gun violence, especially those who were killed in Dallas, we pray. God, I see our prayer. For those who are denied expression of freedom of religion, let us pray. God, I see our prayer. For the homeless who have been employed, we pray. God, I see our prayer. I'd like to pray for a new King Charles III, that his reign may be successful, especially for the people of England and the, and the Commonwealth who are experiencing a lot of economic difficulties and challenges, we pray. Lord Jesus, you have heard our prayers, those that have been spoken aloud and those unspoken. We ask you to be with us and companion us. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Creator. O oh God, we pray, as we come to know your truth, that we make it ours by a worthy way of life and walking with you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our God be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O God. But in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives now forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together in the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, O oh God, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, O God, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Wilton and Jean, our bishops, and all the clergy, both men and women, and for all who are trying to work for a more just world. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, O oh God Almighty Creator, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of our God be with you. Thank you. And let us offer each other the sign of peace.
the sacramental nature of the Eucharist to join us at the Lord's table. As we've been doing for the last three years, please respect people's social distancing. You can either receive right away uh, after receiving the host or cover the host with your hand and return to your pew and receive. Thank you all for helping us keep safe. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ. Graciously be present to us, your people, O oh God, and help us to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Welcome again. Uh, my name is Tom Yates. I'm serving as President of Duke Washington. A few announcements, a few thank yous. Thank you, Reverend Ann. Now that I know I've lived a long enough life to have heard Benjamin or uh, Buckaroo Bonds and I quoted in a, in a homily. So. Anyway, thank you, Daniel, who is our acolyte tonight, David, our sacristan, our choir, our fearless leader, Jeanette, our accompanist, Greg, our uh, fabulous cantor, Robert, who have I forgot? Our, um, Rico was our uh, Eucharistic minister. Um, 
Big thank you to everyone who, and especially to Peter and Nico for putting on the dinner last night. Thank you to everyone who participated in some way, cooked, cleaned, shot, um, stayed to the bitter end, picking up and cleaning up after all that. But by the way, there are lots of leftovers in the back. Also, I believe it is Reverend Ann's 12th anniversary. Yes. We're celebrating that tonight. There's some little bit there. So she was ordained around 12 years ago. I don't know the exact date. It was, uh, um, it was uh, the first weekend in May. Okay. Anyway, uh, <laughs> what else? What else? Um, pick up a bulletin. We are having elections. Uh, there's information there. Ballots have gone out, mostly electronically. Uh, there are a few people we don't have email addresses for, so paper ballots went out. If you are eligible to vote, meaning you are a dues being member, and haven't got a ballot either way, please contact Peter. Uh, what else? Pride is coming up in about a month. See uh, Larry for information about uh, participating in the parade and at the festival. Uh, what else? I know you're all chomping at, bit, at the bit for this, but we are going to begin resuming um, the, the Precious Blessed Blood, the Communion Cup, in uh, about three weeks. It's Pentecost Sunday. There'll be more information. This will be voluntary. Uh, and again, there'll be more information coming, but it's coming. Uh, I think that's about it. There are additional things in here. Have I figured out something? Baseball. You're right, baseball. How could I forget? Especially with Jake back there. Uh, <laughs> night, night Out at the Nats is um, June 6th, D-Day, for those of you who remember things like that. Um, I don't think we have tickets on sale yet, but they will be coming. You'll get an official bobblehead for this, uh, and the, what is his name, Sharky, whatever, uh, Sparky, yeah, something, Creech, uh, whatever. <laughs> I, I'm not learning the names of, be, uh, of birds, so whatever. Anyway, you'll get a bobblehead that's a fried bobblehead, I and mean, it will be worth the $35 for that, right? It'll be a collector's item someday. Don't take it out of the plastic. <laughs> anyway, okay. Um, again, have a great week. Don't leave without getting a piece of cake and eating some leftovers because we got lots of food back there. Um, have a great week. We will see you. Be safe. Thank you. Our God be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Creator and the Redeemer and the Sanctifier. Amen. This Mass is ended. Go and live the Gospel. Thanks be to God.